When you're at the gym, sweating on a treadmill, or lifting heavy weights, you're probably thinking about how great you're going to look once you're ripped. That, or concentrating on not having a heart attack. Either way, you're not wondering about what goes on behind the scenes at the gym. There's a locker full of surprises. Here's our top 10 secrets gyms don't want you to know. Amazing! Number 10. Your personal trainer may not know what they're doing. In most professions, you need qualifications to be able to do it. If I was going to teach you to drive, you'd expect me to have a certificate to say I can do it, right? That doesn't apply to personal trainers in gyms. In fact, in some countries including America, anyone can do it. Unlike other health professionals, personal trainers don't require a license, a certificate, or even any experience. They don't have to know how to help you achieve your fitness goals. They don't have to know how to help you if you get injured. They don't even have to know first aid or CPR. As a result, some personal trainers aren't very good. Personal trainers have even been sued for causing injuries. If you're thinking of using a personal trainer at the gym, make sure to ask what their qualifications are before you sign up. If the only thing they mention is looking good in a tight t-shirt, you're probably in the wrong gym. Number 9. They'll do anything to get you to join. Gyms really want you to sign up to join them, especially on a lucrative monthly contract where you'll have to pay whether you work out regularly or not. As a result, they'll try loads of psychological tricks to get you to sign on the dotted line. For example, no one wants to join a gym that's too crowded. It feels intimidating for a newbie to walk out in front of a big crowd. Some gyms have been known to close pieces of gym equipment, so fewer people are working out when potential customers are visiting. Next, have you ever wondered why the cardio equipment is always near the gym entrance, gyms do this because treadmills and cross trainers look less scary to potential members. The intimidating stuff, like the weight machines, is kept out of the way at the back. Number 8. Sex Cells As we know already, personal trainers don't actually need any qualifications or experience to work at the gym. So how do you think gym managers decide who to hire? That's right, they hire the best looking people. If you want to be a personal trainer, you're more likely to get the job if you look great in shorts or yoga pants, even if you're amazing at helping people reach their fitness goals. When it comes to getting new members to sign up, these people come into their own. If you're a guy looking to join a gym, the manager will usually send out a pretty girl to assist you. They think you won't be able to resist. If you're a girl, you're get the ripped guy in the tight t-shirt. They know you'll fall for it, you're only human. Number 7. Everything is negotiable. In gyms, as in life, people who are willing to haggle get more. Gyms are graded by how many new members they can bring on board every month. Try and join at the end of the month. If they desperately need new signups, they'll agree to anything. They don't want you to walk out the door and go somewhere else. For example, the joining fee you have to pay just to sign up. Tell them you're not paying it, and they're likely just to drop it. And those fees only exist so they can drop them every so often as a special offer. If you're thinking of leaving your gym, they'll also fight to keep you. If you can show them that the gym down the road is charging $10 less per month than you're paying, they'll probably match it. You can also ask for free extras, such as guest passes and personal training sessions. They don't want to lose your monthly payment, so make sure you get the most out of them. Number 6. Gyms sell you a fantasy. Does your gym have a big poster of a smiling guy with arms like trees by the door? Does it have motivational quotes stuck on the wall? That's because gyms are selling a lifestyle, an impossible lifestyle for most of us. Most of us are never going to be that guy on the poster, but we'll start and go to the gym for a few weeks, then we'll stop. To be the guy on the poster, there's no finish line. Once you've got your six pack, you can't quit and sit around eating bacon sandwiches. Maintaining your six pack is a job in itself. What gyms don't tell you is that just going to the gym isn't enough. You need to change your life in other ways too. You need to start eating and drinking right if you're going to be that guy on the poster. You also need to know that it's not going to happen overnight. You need to work out regularly for months, even years, to see any noticeable effect. Exercise is great, but don't expect miracles. Set small, achievable goals and you'll be happier and more motivated. Now that we're halfway, let's have a trivia question. A lot of gyms have a swimming pool, and we all know that they're filled with pee. I mean, even Michael Phelps admits that everyone pees in the pool. Now, take a guess as to how many gallons of pee actually exist in a typical pool and an Olympic-sized pool. I'll reveal the answer at the end, so stick around if you dare to find out. Number 5. The equipment may be disgusting. 
When you lie down on that bench press, what are you lying on? A study by the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine found that 63% of weights equipment at the gym was covered in germs, notable rhinovirus, the cause of the common cold. A sniffle is just the start, however. If you have a cut on your skin when you come into contact with these germs, you could be looking at MRSA. Skin infections from gym equipment are also common, as well as weight machines, yoga mats are hotbeds for germs. All those sweaty backs and feet all over them, then they're just stacked up in the corner. Ugh. Unfortunately, bacteria, fungi, viruses, and the like thrive in damp, sweaty places. Your gym is likely one of those places. Even if your gym tells you they clean regularly, it's probably only deep cleaned once a week. That's certainly long enough for germs to regroup. Make sure you put a towel down before you sit on a weight machine, and try to invest in your own yoga mat. That way, it's just your own germs you're wallowing in. Number four, gyms really don't want you to go. It may sound counterintuitive, but your gym's business model is built on you not turning up. Your gym has far more members than it can accommodate in one go. Around 20 times more, in fact. They're far happier if you're slacking on your workout regime. Luckily for them, they know you're more than willing to do just that. Joining a gym is often a New Year's resolution. 22% of new gym memberships come in January, and the second week of the year is always a gym's busiest. However, 80% of people who join in January have quit by May. Only 6% of a gym's memberships come in summer, so that's the time when you want to negotiate that special deal. Your gym's favourite customers are the people who receive complimentary membership from their employer, especially the ones who walk in, scan their card so it looks like they've worked out, then turn around and walk out. It's the definition of free money for your gym. Number 3 cancelling can be a nightmare. We've seen how gyms can tell you anything and play all kinds of psychological tricks to get you to join. So you won't be surprised to hear that if you want to cancel your membership, gyms like to make it as difficult as possible. For example, many gyms won't let you cancel over the phone. It has to be in writing, delivered in person or through the mail. If you want to leave because you're moving house, they won't let you out of your contract if there's a gym from the same chain in your new town. Other gyms close certain facilities in their gyms, like saunas or steam rooms, but don't alter the price to match. Then they don't let you use it as a reason to cancel. In 2011, there were 7,000 complaints about gyms in America, and the vast majority were about cancellation issues. Make sure if you sign up for a gym membership, you read every word of the small print. Number two, your gym can be dangerous. In America in 2012, Nearly 460,000 people were injured in the gym. Usually they're people's pre-existing injuries being made worse by overdoing it in the gym, but sometimes they're not. Gym goers have broken bones, received concussions, and much else. However, many gyms take no responsibility for injuries that happen on their premises. More worryingly, due to the pressure exercise can put on your heart, there is a risk of having a heart attack at the gym. Fewer than a dozen states in the US require that gyms have a defibrillator on the premises. And even if they do have one, there may not be a member of staff trained to use it. When you join a gym, make sure you have an induction from a trainer on how to use the equipment safely, and check what measures they have in place should something bad happen. Be safe out there, people. If you made it this far, I'm going to bet you enjoyed this video, so why not subscribe? We upload amazing fact-filled list videos daily. Also, make sure to click that bell icon to stay updated, or you'll regret missing out on some amazing knowledge that could have filled your brain. Now let's get back to it. Number one, you don't really need to go to the gym. If you want to be fit and healthy, going to the gym is one way to help achieve that, but it's not the only way, and it could do more harm than good. The hardest exercises aren't always the best for you. Rather than try to get ripped, try for functional fitness. As you get older, your muscles and ligaments will naturally weaken, but slower, more sustained exercises will help counter this process. Also, you shouldn't go to the gym too often. It's not healthy to lift weights until you drop every single day. You need to give your muscles time to rest and regenerate. Recovery time is also an important part of exercise. But most importantly, ask yourself this, do you really need to go to the gym at all? Why not make the world your gym? Running, cycling, swimming in the sea, these are all great forms of exercise, and you don't need to pay a monthly fee or go to a sweaty gym to do them. Finally, like most people, if your goal is weight loss, then changing your diet trumps exercise every time. According to the National Institutes of Health, exercise is excellent for health, but pretty useless as a weight loss tool. It's all about eating better. Before you commit yourself to a gym, check that it aligns with your goals. Now, back to that question about pee in pools. In research published by the Journal of Environmental Sciences, it was found out that from a sample of 20 public swimming pools and 10 public hot tubs, average swimming pools have around 13 gallons of pee in them. 
and Olympic pools have around 130 gallons of pee in them. It may sound gross, but it isn't actually something to worry about, since chlorine is present in pool water to kill bacteria, and pee is actually sterile. Did any of these secrets surprise you? Can you think of any more? Leave a comment down below to let me know. Thanks for watching.